This is Master Chief, and this is what Master Chief has looked like in every single video game and television appearance. But which Master Chief design is truly the best, and which is maybe not so great? Well, we've put together the definitive list as far as art direction and character design go, at least based on our opinions, obviously. So let's go ahead and go through every single Halo game, taking a look at Master Chief's design and picking the best and worst parts of it. First things first, we're going all the way back to 1999's first Halo debut, where we got to look at what Master Chief originally looked like in the earlier development stages of the game. And on first appearance, if you haven't seen this, this is super awkward, but really charming at the same time, knowing that this is coming from an era where video games were so primitive when it came to 3D models in the late 90s. But what's really cool is you can actually tell that the armor is slowly starting to come together, representative of what Master Chief would be known for later on. Way later down the road, they released this helmet as a part of MCC for like a special anniversary of Halo, which was really cool to bring it into the universe. And you can't help but to wonder if this was the design that they ended up using for all the Halo games, what things would be like. Last year, Modder Cashiera actually made this incredible mod for Halo 3 that replaces Master Chief in cutscenes with this version, and it's amazing to think about. So yes, this one is goofy. I don't think this is like the greatest representation of Master Chief overall, but I definitely don't hate it either. We gotta start this list somewhere, and I think throwing this 1999 Master Chief from the Macworld event in B tier is a pretty good starting point for this overall tier list. Everything else has to either be better than this, or worse than this, or at least the same. Okay, Halo Combat Evolved came next, obviously, and this showed off what Master Chief would look like for the first time ever, and this was kind of the basis for what the future Halo games would choose to do. They would go ahead and make some positive refinements from this design later on, but this was kind of its first appearance, and I think that this Master Chief served its purpose perfectly. It introduced players to the franchise, showing that you're not just a regular secret agent like games like GoldenEye or Perfect Dark already did. You are a spaceman cyber dude who has this cool helmet, which kind of insinuates that the player is stronger than a standard person. It was actually really clever in this design, and while some things are a little bit clunky, I do really like the coloration that they chose for this version of Master Chief. It was unique for its time, and it's maybe not as detailed in texture as what later Halo games would have, but it worked for setting up this universe originally, so I think we're gonna go ahead and put this one in the A tier category. Now, when Halo 2 was announced, the expectation was higher than ever for what this Halo game could bring. Now, Halo 1 was already amazing, and it was way more successful than anyone expected it to be, so Halo 2 had to up the ante, and doing a redesign of the protagonist could be kind of a risky play. However, Bungie chose to to go ahead and overhaul the appearance of the character, keeping the base and key parts that players loved, like this idea of a green super spaceman shooting stuff and whatnot. But obviously, with a lot of the technological advances that they added into the Halo engine, they're able to bring this character to life in a new way, and we had the Mark VI reveal, which is the Master Chief that would go on to essentially appear in the next main Halo games. I think whenever Halo fans are talking about a classic classic Master Chief design, or they want to see a Master Chief design look a certain way, I think they're typically talking about the Halo 2 design, as this is probably the most recognizable version of the Master Chief, and rightfully so. It is really, really crisp by 2004 standards. I think it's fair to go ahead and put this one in the S tier. Now, when it comes to Master Chief and Halo 3, they played it pretty safe in making sure everything was consistent now, as they were really starting to build the universe out. They couldn't keep just overhauling and changing things, or at the very least, Bungie didn't want to do that yet. So Master Chief's appearance in Halo 3 is much like its Halo 2 predecessor, except everything's cleaned up with the power of the Xbox 360, and Halo 3 to this date has some of the best aged lighting physics in any video game I've ever seen. Like the fact that Master Chief looked like this in 2007 is incredibly impressive. Now we do have to say one little change that we noticed besides a lot of the wear and tear on the armor being more visible is that the coloration on Master Chief between 2 and 3 is slightly different. 2 had this darker green that we kind of like a little bit better, but Halo 3 still had this more realistic shine to it, and then also with Halo 3, the visor was upgraded to this real-time reflection, which is something that I think they had planned on implementing for a long time, or they always wanted to do something when it came to reflection in Master Chief's helmet visor, and I think they finally got it down with Halo 3, and it just really just kind of adds that icing on the cake for this design. So I also think that the 
Halo 3 armor set for Master Chief is up there as well, going up in S tier. So now at this point, you may be thinking, wow, this is a very diverse list. Where can anything else get interesting? Well, when we go into the 343 era of Halo games, or we go into some of the anniversary remakes, things are going to start landing all over the place, and we get pretty opinionated on these things. Going into this list, we do realize that this is heavily just kind of decided by Luke and I's opinions here. So of course, other people are going to have their own opinions. So if you disagree with us, feel free to let us know what your opinion is in the comment and how you would change up your listing. Next, we look to Halo Reach. There's really not that much of Master Chief in Halo Reach. He has a very small cameo appearance in one of the last cutscenes in the game. Literally, all we see for a brief moment is a pan over and you can see Master Chief is in a cryopod on the Pillar of Autumn, which brings the story full circle. Now, I think this inclusion was a really cool Easter egg and a really cool commemorative way to represent how Reach's story does in fact tie into the Halo trilogy. And I don't think they needed to necessarily keep a close eye on what Master Chief's design was for the sake of this cameo appearance. But since we're making a tier list completely based on the designs, we are going to hold Halo Reach's design to the same scrutiny as if this was a protagonist's adventure and we were going to see this through the entire game beginning to end, just like we would with any of the other Master Chiefs. So yeah, while the design serves its purpose for the Easter egg itself, if we had a whole Halo game based on Master Chief's design for Halo Reach, I don't really think that this is that great of a design, actually. I don't think it's awful either. I do appreciate the fact that they kept a couple little accuracies prominent here. They made sure Master Chief at least had the old Mark V helmet. He wasn't just in his Mark VI helmet randomly, which would cause a lot of confusion between Combat Evolved and Halo 2. And for the sake of the Easter egg, they totally could have done the other helmet, and even that would still work. It might raise some eyebrows, but yeah, this does kind of look interesting. It, it doesn't look quite like Master Chief. It does look like a Spartan wearing the helmet that Master Chief would wear in Combat Evolved, but it doesn't exude the idea of Master Chief other than the fact that, like, the context of the Easter egg he's in. I kind of miss the fact that in Halo Reach, the new art direction that they went with toned down a lot of the reflectiveness in the visors. And in general, even if someone is playing as Master Chief's armor for, like, the Reach playthrough, even looking at that, it doesn't quite feel like Master Chief. It just feels like someone else cosplaying as Master Chief something. It's not awful. It's not the worst design of Master Chief we've seen by far. So we're going to go ahead and put this a little bit lower than some of the other rankings, but not necessarily in like the bad range. We're just going to put it middle tier at C tier. Next, we can look to Halo 4, and this probably will be one of our more controversial takes. I have a lot of the time talked about how one of my biggest gripes besides the pacing of Halo 4 was the shift in art direction. So I am going to be very, very biased here, but I don't want to also like change our tier list just because I'm worried how other people are going to perceive our opinion. I get the 343 Industries wanted to make Master Chief feel more like this heavy tank, this like heavy duty machinery thing to fit into the whole like storytelling line that they're trying to do in the new direction. I also understand that maybe doing a art direction change was important to make Halo 4's visuals look more competitive. And while they're still on 360 hardware and they can't necessarily increase things like graphical fidelity or anything like that, doing an art direction change can kind of give the illusion of something being bigger and more visually appealing than what we'd seen in previous titles. And I think Master Chief kind of fell victim to the time period that Halo 4 was releasing in, maybe. There was definitely a lot of elements. We know 343 wanted to make their own Master Chief, and this was the design that they came up with. My issue here is it's just too dramatically different from where we had seen Master Chief last with Halo 3. And considering this picks up immediately after the events of Halo 3, it always felt very jarring leaving off on a cutscene like this and picking up right after in a cutscene that looks like this. And this character doesn't look like the Master Chief we had seen in previous titles like Halo 2 or Halo 3. And there was no real like in lore explanation for why he looked dramatically different. I know there's that whole like nanobot thing that a developer said or something, but that's not necessarily canon and it's dumb. And then on top of that, it just felt like some parts of Master Chief that are a part of his core were just abandoned here. His visor is a completely different color. I don't know when he went from gold visor to orange visor, and I know like in some promotional material it's goldish, but honestly, you watch all the cutscenes, he straight up has an orange visor throughout the entire game. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this one down here in F tier just to be 
completely honest to how I feel about this. Now, when it comes to Halo 5 Guardians, I do have slightly different opinions because they did do some interesting refinements with Master Chief's design. Uh, a little bit of a couple of weird things I have to point out, but for the most part, they did kind of do something interesting. They really doubled down on this Halo 4 art style that they did, but they tried to incorporate a few things from the other Halo games to kind of bring Master Chief to more of a middle ground and build a better version of what fans expect Master Chief to look like. I don't know. This time around, Master Chief's a little more green. His visor still has hexagons on it. It's still orangish, but sometimes looks a little more gold. And just in general, the shaping of the helmet kind of fits a little bit better to what Master Chief more looked like in Halo 2 or Halo 3. But it still leans way too heavily into the new art design that they had went with for Halo 4. I think the best version of the Halo 5 Master Chief is probably in like the live action trailers maybe, but the in-game version was still not quite there yet. Also in Halo 5 Guardians, a lot of the times when you look at Master Chief, it kind of looks like he has this hunchback going on. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but next time you play Halo 5 or watch a Halo 5 cutscene, pay attention to it. it it's <laughs> prominent more often than maybe you think it would be. So yeah, I don't know really what people expect for Halo 5 Guardians. I feel like oftentimes Halo 4 and Halo 5 are just grouped together. I don't think that they should be. I think Halo 5 Guardians would fit much better up in the D tier, like one step higher than Halo 4. Also, we are going to go into the anniversary Halo games, but I want to just get through the main games first. So we're going to do Halo Infinite next. Halo Infinite had so many fans hopeful that like finally, after all this time, 343 was turning the ship around and really listening to fan feedback and changing things and working on a Halo game that fans truly wanted. And one of the things that reflected this idea at the very least was the redesigned Master Chief had when he was revealed finally for Halo Infinite. This design would get a few iterations, but for the most part, stayed pretty consistent and we were introduced to this new version of Master Chief. And this version of Master Chief was really good actually. It took a lot of the ideas from the original Halo games that fans really loved, even drawing some inspiration from things like Combat Evolved, and then keeping the at least concepts from Halo 4 and 5 where they wanted Master Chief to feel bulky, big, and heavy and have some weight to him without necessarily trying to like incorporate it or override it into the design. And I think because of that, we ended up getting a very good iteration of the Master Chief. I think that this is probably the best answer for where Halo needed to be with a Master Chief design if they weren't going to just bring back that good old Halo 2, Halo 3 design. And really, there's just not too much to complain about here. I think if they continued to use this design moving forward, we would be in pretty good shape. And then they can work on all the other things that they need to fix in Halo. They don't necessarily need to give Chief another redesign. We're going to go ahead and put this one all the way up in A tier, which is probably higher than a lot of people expected us to put this. Okay, then over the years, we had the Anniversary remakes, which did change things up quite a bit. Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, I always love to talk about because when they first revealed Master Chief in the trailer, they hyped it up. They're like, look at these graphics. That was 10 years ago. This was Master Chief then. And this is him now. Da -da -da -da. And then they show Master Chief and he looks like this. And you're like, oh, what did you guys do here? Is this supposed to be a remake of that 1999 helmet accidentally? Do you guys not understand what Master Chief is supposed to look like? Have you played a Halo game? Okay, not too many people were talking about that, but I remember thinking that exactly when I saw that trailer. I was like, this is absurdly bad. Later on in a vidoc, they'd even talk about how getting Master Chief's appearance right was actually a lot of work during the development process. The first stuff we put out around E3, uh, I think the forum reaction was instantly, Chief looks wrong, his visor's too big, the color's all wrong. Some people thought we were doing it intentionally as a retro, if you saw the original uh, Chief from like 1999 era. He had a really tall, very matte reflective helmet. So it actually looked similar to that. And fortunately enough, they changed it. The first initial debut version of Master Chief, F tier, easily. Then we have two other versions of Master Chief from Combat Evolved Anniversary. We have the box art cover version, which, oh my goodness, this looks so clean. I know the helmet maybe isn't like the perfect adaptation of Mark V, but I just really like how they stylized this and just how neat it looked. I really wish that this design was the design we had in the game. I'm gonna put this one in B tier. It's not the most amazing version of Master Chief, but it still was really good. And then we got this design, which I don't know. It's okay, I guess. It's not like the greatest thing. It doesn't feel like an accurate remake of the Combat Evolved original one. It's like a little bit of a step down. So this version is gonna go in C tier. I think they should have just went with either something a lot closer to the original design or maybe that design from the cover 
Endeavor would have been cool. Um, I don't know. Nonetheless, it, it is where it is. The original CE we had put up an A tier. I still think that that version is the best of everything for Combat Evolved. Halo 2 Anniversary was really impressive though. This game releasing in a time after Halo 4 was like a breath of fresh air. Like this design felt very true to that original Halo 2 design and maybe even started to incorporate that feeling of Master Chief needing to be a little heavier in weight or just bulkier. And while the game, you know, just kind of repaints a lot of the in-game engine stuff when you're playing the game, the cutscenes that were animated by Blur really recreate that like tank feeling while keeping the original design true. And I think that this was like the first modern take on Master Chief that truly was good and maybe was what they went back to looking at when they were planning Halo Infinite. So I think Halo 2 Anniversaries, Master Chief specifically, the redesigned version, whether we're looking at the cutscenes or the in-game version, they're both great. And I think that this does deserve to go up in S tier as well. Okay, next we're looking at Halo 4's Forward Unto Dawn and oof. Okay, um, this one I'm conflicted with. I was not a fan of Forward Unto Dawn. I voiced my opinion on that. I think the best part of Forward Unto Dawn is definitely just like the ending stuff with Master Chief in it, like when the action actually happens. The rest of it is just filler, like just to fluff up the length of the thing. That being said, Master Chief, looking back at it now, um, he looks a little plasticky, I think. For a live action adaptation, this was a good starting point, maybe. I think that it's definitely not like the worst thing. I mean, they could have done like some weird cardboard cutout, but I also don't feel like it's realistic armor necessarily. It looks like a Master Chief prop, if that makes sense. Now, fortunately enough, a lot of the moments with Master Chief in it take place at night in the dark, and that does help the armor a lot and kind of hides some of the fakish feelings of it. So I lean towards seeing this armor in a more positive light. I'm just glad that later on, like even the television series for what criticism it does get, they changed the way that the armor looked because I don't think they could have stuck with this armor for like another adaptation later on without it really not looking real. I think this one ends up getting a pass and I'm gonna go ahead and put it up in B tier. I think that's pretty fair despite its blemishes. It still ended up looking good if we're just looking at what we saw in the movie. Okay, we also have the package, which was this 3D short. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't like it. I don't like this look for Master Chief. I get what they were trying to do. I get that this was like a really cool thing for a change. Like this is the first time Master Chief was getting like expanded media beyond just the books and stuff. And that was really exciting. And getting a 3D rendered movie was cool. And a lot of the stories in Halo Legends were cool. I just didn't like the package. I thought it was so corny and I don't really think that this was a really good adaptation of Master Chief's design here. I don't know. It just, the cutscenes in the Halo games look better than this. It looks like an episode of Jimmy Neutron or something. I've just never been a big fan of it. I don't think it's necessarily F tier, but it's definitely not that much higher. I'm going to go ahead and put this one in D tier. Okay. And then last, but certainly not least, we are faced with Halo, the television series. And boy, oh boy, is our opinion on this going to maybe be a little bit divisive amongst the community, at least the people who watch our videos. Here's the deal. I fully understand the criticisms that the television series has. It's definitely not the greatest storytelling ever, but I've kind of enjoyed watching the show, whether it's a train wreck or not, just because I'm a Halo fan and I'm just fully intrigued and invested to see where this story ends up going because it's going somewhere. I don't know where, but I mean, it's, it's interesting at least. I'm not bored like I am playing Halo 5. But I'm gonna be absolutely real with y'all. Say what you will about the story and everything else, but they nailed Master Chief's look here. He looks so clean in the live action setting. Take the story and everything away. This is what fans wanted Master Chief to look like if they did a Halo movie or television series, and they got that right to the T. Now, of course, it would be nice if, you know, Master Chief wore his helmet and, you know, wore his suit more often, but that, that's a whole other debate. They nailed the suit. He looks good. And if we're talking about the future, I actually have more faith that the Halo television series will turn around than Halo Infinite actually being able to turn around. I don't know. I shouldn't say these things in these videos. Maybe I'm burning bridges, but you know, whatever. I'm putting the TV show version of Master Chief up in S tier. Now, I do know there are other forms of media when it comes to Master Chief, and we didn't want to include just every single appearance, like if he's in a comic book or maybe like an animated short or something like that. So we tried to stick to just this. I know some people are going to want to know about Fall of Reach's Master Chief. I think it looked pretty 
pretty good actually. I just don't want to have to open up the can of worms of every single animated Master Chief appearance or illustration that's ever existed. So we're, we're gonna not go into that grounds, but yeah, the Fall of Reach one did look pretty good. Okay guys, now it's time for the good old comment section. What do you guys think of our tier list? This is what we came up with. I feel pretty good about this. I feel like it's an honest and accurate depiction of how we feel about this. But if you disagree, feel free to let us know in the comments. I would be curious to see why you feel a certain way or you know, maybe you really loved Halo 4 and 5's art direction. That's fair. Just tell us why. What, what was it about it that you liked. Anyways, that's it for today though. Thanks so much for watching. Use code ROCKETSLOTH when getting your guys' gamer sup on. Also, thanks to our patrons for all of the support. We really appreciate it. If you guys want to throw a couple bucks our way, you can join our Patreon. Link in the description. Otherwise, that's it for today. We'll see you next time with a brand new video.